it's nuts. Like, I still can't get over it. The fact that he knew it was exactly Michigan. It was at the War Memorial. Like, his name was Kevin. Like, it's just, like, every single little detail I could have imagined, like, someone to know. I mean, I just always, like, take that as, like, an experience. Like, you know, getting to know someone who just, like, knows a human body and how to manipulate us and, like, see through someone's mind. It's just kind of crazy. I've trained to be a human lie detector. Do you know when you gave it away? Hmm. Just now. Amazing. The average person tells about four lies a day. That's approximately 1,460 lies a year. And by the time we're 60, we've told over 80,000 lies. I've trained to be a human lie detector, reading people's body language, their eyes, and even their thoughts. I'm about to meet a police officer who's gonna try and lie to me. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? What's your name? Hugo. Love Hugo, it. I'm Keith. Okay. Thanks for meeting me here today. So, Hugo, I'm gonna talk a little bit about lie detection in a few moments. Okay. You're a former police officer. Correct. You've probably come across a lot of people who try to deceive you, would that be correct? Yeah. Yeah, tried to lie to you and things like that? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, do you think you became pretty good at detecting when somebody was lying? Uh, fair, yeah, I would say I was fair. Yeah. So, did you use intuition or were you looking, were you looking for body language signals or what were you body looking Body language for? signals, um, patterns of speech, um, uh, some of the uh, reddening of the skin, you know, heat of the, the blood when it goes to the ear. Sure, so changes in, in body temperature, perspiration, people maybe right. folding their arms for a defense posture. Defensive, right. And maybe diverting their away. gaze, things yeah. like that. So you're looking for all those little signals. Right. If I was to give you a lie detector test right now using a machine, I'd need to establish a baseline. Right. So I'd need to know when you're telling the truth. I've trained to be a human lie detector mm -hmm. and have already determined your baseline. Oh. Do you know when I did that? No. When I walked into the room, I asked you your name. And assuming that your name really is Hugo, yes. you told the truth. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. So hopefully I'll be able to detect when you're lying. Put out both hands like this for me. Here's what we're gonna do. In a moment, I'll ask you to think of an imaginary object. And I'll ask you to think about, just think about which hand that object is in. Either your right hand or your left hand. I'll ask you both times, is it here? Is it here? And both times you'll say no. It's my job to figure out when you're lying. Okay. So first of all, have a moment now to think of an object and think of the shape of that object and what it looks like. Okay. You got something? Good. Look directly at me. Is it in your right hand? No. Is it in your left hand? No. I don't know if you noticed, but your chin dropped ever so slightly when you said it. It's in your left hand. So I believe you're lying, and it is over here. Is it in your left hand? Yeah. Be honest, yes, it is. Good. OK, we'll try that again. This time, you can swap hands, or you can keep it in the same hand. It's up to you. This time, Hugo, you're not going to say anything. You're just going to shake your head no. OK. Both times. Is it here? Is it here? You shook your head just a little bit too long. The second time around, you kept it in the same hand. And be honest, is it still here? Yes. Yes, good. I'll try this one last time. This time, though, I'm just going to think the question. And you're just going to think the answer. Okay. But you'll think no both times. It's one thing to read body language, but it's another to read thoughts. Do you know when you gave it away? Hmm. Just now, it's in the same hand, yeah. it's here. Yeah. Good, visualize the object, see it right now. This is something that actually exists. Uh, is this something quite hard in texture, is it hard? Yeah. Yeah, good. I'm seeing a, an animated object, something to do with one of your children? 
No. No. Okay, and I can see like a lead. Does a lead make any sense? Yes. Yes? Mm. I'm seeing ears. Does that make any sense? Yes. I'm seeing a, like a something to do with your dog? Your yes. Pot. Yes, that's what it is. What was it? It's a dog pull toy. A dog pull toy? Yes. Really? Yes. Thanks so much. Amazing. When somebody has heightened anxiety, whether it's from lying or whether it's from a conflict, the body activates a lot of its autonomic systems. And this is expressed in body position, sweat, and muscle contraction. He read my body language, uh, he read my behavior, I, uh, watched my eyes for any uh, subtle movements and probably uh, the tension in my, in my hands as well. If you're watching for the cues, they raise an eyebrow, uh, they will glance away for a second. I could tell that they're nervous about something, but they do it very quickly. It can be very, very small. If I knew, if I knew what he knew, I'd be a marvel out in the street. Every single memory now, I'm erasing from your mind. Gone. Well, what's your name? Where are you from? The human brain, the world's fastest supercomputer, with billions of neurons communicating in the blink of an eye where files and memories are stored. These files can be selected, moved, and even temporarily deleted. Hello, how are you guys? Hi. Uh, do you mind if I sit with you for a moment? Yes, sure. I... Is that okay? Good. Uh, what's your name? Andreas. Andreas, and you are? Rebecca. And you are? I'm Christoph. Christoph, nice yeah. to meet you all. And how long do you guys all know each other? I've known Christoph since kindergarten. Right, so a long time. And she's uh, my girlfriend. She's known Christoph for a couple of months now. I'm going to try a little experiment with memories right now, okay? Uh, there's two different types of memories. Long-term memory, obviously, which is where everything that we've ever experienced is stored. And then there's short-term memory, which is, you know, things like when we put our keys down. And that's why we sometimes forget things like our keys. I'm going to try something with you right now. Is that okay? Yeah. I want you to access that part of your memory where all your files are stored, where all of your memory is. It's right here behind your ears. It's called the temporal lobe. And I want you to just bring all of those memories, every single memory from your life, up, across here, down, and onto your forehead. This is the frontal lobe. Every single memory now, I'm erasing from your mind. Going, going. Gone. When were you born? Uh, do you recognize these people at all? Like twitching. No way. No way. Where are you right now? Seriously, do you remember? Do you remember these people at all? Here, I've got something. That might this might help you? Just have a look in the mirror. Got a mirror? Do you recognize that person? Here. It's okay, just relaxing now, and all of those memories come back into your lobe right here. All those memories go back into your temporal lobe right here, and everything's back to normal, fine. Uh, what's your name? Christoph. Christoph, and when were you born? September 4th. <laughs> September 4th, and do you recognize these people? Yeah. Uh, who are they? This is my best friend and his girlfriend. Right. Like, and, and by the way, do you recognize that person there? Who's that? It's me. It's you, right? Yeah. Okay. Hold on to that. Thanks so much. So do you remember, like, not remembering us? Like, yeah, what do you time? think happened for the last, like, two minutes? What do you remember? I, I, I just remember being in, like, just in trance and just hearing his voice. It was, I don't remember anything else. Do you remember when he touched the back of your head and then brought, erased all your memories? Is that the last thing you remember? Yeah, he brought, it, he brought it to the front of my head and I, I just couldn't remember anything else. You were just like staring at us, the most blank look on your face. Right. You looked in the mirror, were you like, who is that person? Or did you... Do you remember looking at yourself in the mirror? It was just blank, like, it, was just, it just came by, so it's such a blur. When you put somebody in a very deep trance, you're dealing with their primitive childlike mind, and you can convince it, and that means you put in perceptions on a very deep level. What's your name? Try and remember your name. Who are you? Who do you think I am? Uh, who's this dude over here? Who's this? Do you know him? No? Really? You don't remember? Try and remember. 
sleeping all the way down, relaxing every single muscle in your body. In a moment, I'll just lay you out on your back. To see him just have his mind wiped clean really blew my mind. I've spent a lot of time trying to get it inside other people's heads. Now I've found someone who might just be able to get into mine. Moshi Kai is 11 years old, but unlike most kids his age, he's a little ahead of the curve. He learned to read at age three and has been playing Mozart and Bach since he was four. He began college at age eight and graduated summa cum laude. He plans to have his PhD in astrophysics before he is even able to vote. He was brought here today, but has no idea why I chose this field as our meeting place. Hey, Moshi Kai, how are you? Hey, good, good, how about you? Yeah, great, thank you. Thanks so much for coming along here today. Oh, no problem. And you're probably wondering right now what you're doing in the middle of a cornfield. Well, the reason I've chosen you today, Moshi Kai, is because of what you've got going on right up there. You've really done more, as you know, in 11 years than a lot of people would have done in a lifetime. We're gonna try a demonstration in mind reading today. Have you ever had your mind read before? No. Have you ever read somebody's mind before? No. Here's what I'd like you to do. Just close your eyes. Actually, put your hands over your eyes for me. Put your hands over your eyes. I want you to think of something, something that you can clearly visualize. You've got something in mind, keep your hand over your eyes because I'm gonna draw something on my hand. I don't want you to see what it is. Good, open your eyes. I want you to take this marker for me. And whatever it was that you saw in your mind, I want you to draw it on your hand, nice and big. Hold your hand up so I don't see. Draw it nice and big, as big as you can. All right, I'll take back the marker. Now, Moshi Kai, you could have drawn anything. Yes. Show me what you draw. You drew, it's kind of like the, the peace sign. Yes. This is crazy. It was incredible that he drew the shape and knew the shape before I did when I write it down. How did he do it? I feel the peace sign is a very profound shape and very significant for people living in this time. To some extent, this is the reason why I chose the shape of the peace sign. I'll tell you what, just come with me for a minute down here. You see, Moshe Kai, I told you we were doing an experiment in mind reading, correct? Yes. But what if I told you I wasn't reading your mind? What if I told you you were reading mine? Would you believe me? Maybe a little bit. Maybe, but you're not sure. Well, I knew that you wouldn't be sure until you went home and watched this show just like them. There's exactly two lines at 45 degrees. And I'm like, wait a minute, the peace sign has two lines going at 45 degrees from the center. I just realized that this is like a whole peace sign right over here. I thought he was gonna read my mind and see what kind of shape I'm thinking of, but actually I read his mind all this experiment right here.